materials are something we use every single day. Take my water bottle, for example. I expect it to hold my drink without leaking, and this one has a shatterproof guarantee, so I can take it with me hiking and not worry about dropping it on the ground. It isn't, however, rated for hot drinks. A mug, on the other hand, can hold drinks both warm and cold. It isn't going to leak, provided I don't tip it upside down. But I don't think I want to drop this mug, as I'm pretty sure it doesn't have a shatterproof guarantee. Both of these products have the same main objective, hold a drink. Yet they're made of vastly different materials, polymers versus ceramics, and therefore have different uses. Material performance, or how a material behaves once in service in a product, is something we experience every day and something that's integral to product design. I need to understand my product objectives and constraints in order to be able to select the best material based on these criteria. But materials is a broad field. How can I begin to think about material performance in a useful way? In this ANSYS innovation course, we will be doing exactly that. We'll define material performance and see how it impacts material selection based on product design criteria. We'll define material families and see how we can use material families to group materials together in useful ways based on their properties. And finally, we'll use these material families to select materials based on product design criteria. My name is Dr. Caitlin Tyler, and I'll be your instructor for today's course. Thank you for joining me, and let's get started.